Hi, and welcome to New Life Online. My name is Dave Finley. I'm the pastor at New Life Assembly in Killarney, Manitoba. And we're so glad that you've joined us for our Sunday program online. You know, we are now meeting in person in the church in Killarney, 411 Finley Street. And we certainly welcome you if you're in the area Please join us at 1030 in the morning. We certainly welcome you to be a part of our worship service. In just a few moments, I'm going to continue a series. It talks about who is God, and we're talking about having encounters with God. We certainly invite you to join us and stay with us for the rest of the service as we hear the Word of God. In just a few moments, our worship team is going to lead us in some songs of praise and worship. But if you'd like more information about New Life Assembly, you can always connect with us by texting the word CONNECT to the number 431 Four hundred nine five eight five, and we'll be sure to get back to you with some information. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Thank you for each person that's joined us today in watching this service and listening to the Word of God. We pray your blessing upon each one. May your words speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Who is God to you? Who is God to us? Is he boring? Old? Irrelevant? Is he real? Is he powerful? We tell ourselves, God is nothing more than words on a page. His power isn't real. He's small, weak, and insignificant. He doesn't understand my daily struggle. To us, he's absent, lifeless, dead. Is this truly God's character? Is he weak? Is he absent? Does God still exist? Is he real? God is more. He is more than a line or a passage. His power is not confined to words penned by man. It's real. From his mouth, the universe came to be. He is more than talk. He is action. He is by our side. He understands our pain, our struggle. Mere words cannot describe the warmth of his embrace or the shelter that he brings. He is more. As a child on our street, we used to play a game called hide and seek. I'm sure most of you have played it at some point in time. One child who is it counts to 100 while the other kids run and hide. And then it's his job to find them before they come home free. It's always a fun game. It's a, almost a universal game. Spiritually, we tend to play a similar game with God, only we twist it a little bit. Instead of us hiding, we believe that God is hiding from us and that somehow it's our job to find him. If we look really hard, we'll find him because he's hiding from us. And yet the Bible reveals a God who doesn't hide from us, but who in fact takes pains to reveal himself to us, to show himself to us. God wants us to know who he is and how we can know him. In virtually every encounter that we read about in the Bible, where people meet with God, God is always seen as the initiator. He is the one who comes looking for us. Think of these Bible stories. Think of Adam and Eve after they had sinned, they were hiding from God and God came looking for them. Think of Noah. We don't read that Noah was looking for God, but the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God saw him and took notice of him. We read about Elijah, the great prophet of God. We find that after a great spiritual victory, he ends up depressed, lonely, in a cave, wanting to die. And God comes to him and says, Elijah, what are you doing here? Certainly we read about the disciples in the New Testament who were fishing when Jesus comes along and meets with them and calls them to follow after him. In one of the interesting encounters we read in Matthew, or pardon me, John chapter 1, Jesus comes across a man by the name of Nathanael. And we read this, when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me, Nathanael? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Jesus was looking for Nathanael even before Nathanael was looking for Jesus. And we read that in many, many stories of the Bible. We have started a new series of messages talking about who God is. And we've been talking about God encounters where people meet with God and discover who God is in their life. And one of the things that we have talked about is the fact that God reveals himself, both Old Testament and New Testament, as the one who comes seeking for us. Jesus said the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus told the story of the shepherd who had a hundred sheep and one was lost and the shepherd went looking for him. When people want nothing to do with God, God comes looking for them. We read in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 in speaking to a church, the Bible says that Jesus stands at the door of our lives knocking. He comes to us and wants to initiate a relationship 
with us. Don't be surprised if you have friends who want nothing to do with God. Don't be surprised if when you talk to them about spiritual things, they're not interested. The Bible says in many cases, they are not interested in God, but God comes looking for them. Think of Saul in the New Testament. He was the enemy of the church, a persecutor of the church. He was not looking for God. He was looking for Christians that he could put in jail. And yet Jesus comes to, uh, to Saul and asks him why he's persecuting him. And Saul comes into a new relationship with God. Some of you are praying for a friend or family members, and they seem far away from God. May I encourage you, don't give up. God is the one seeking after them. And one day, perhaps when you least expect it, God will speak into their heart and they will respond to the things of God. Please keep praying. The Bible says in the book of John that no one can come to Jesus unless the Father who sent him draws them. And Jesus is even now drawing people to himself, I believe. This is what God did to Moses. Moses was 80 years old when he had his first dramatic encounter with God. Perhaps he knew a little bit about God before, but it was when he was in the desert looking after sheep that God came to Moses in the form of a burning bush. And there Moses had his first encounter with God and he began to discover who God is. I mean, Moses has had some pretty incredible experiences with God after this. They went through various plagues in Egypt. God led them through the Red Sea, that God has met their needs in a variety of ways. But now Moses has reached a place where having a relationship with God he now wants more with God. He wants to know God in a greater way. Today, we're going to read about that other encounter that Moses had with God. It starts in the book of Exodus, chapter 33. Moses has just come down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, the law. And as he comes down the mountain, he finds that the Israelites, led by his own brother, are carousing and dancing and partying as they worship a golden calf that Aaron had made. Moses is so angry, he throws down the law and breaks it. And God is angry and he tells Moses to step out of the way. He's going to destroy the Israelites and he'll start a new nation with Moses as the head. And Moses pleads with God not to do that. And he pleads with God to continue on the journey with them. And this is what we read in Exodus 33, starting at verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not yet let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Moses appeals to God's love for him and God's knowledge of him. And he pleads with God to show him more of God's ways and to remind uh, himself that these people, the Israelites, as rebellious as they are, they are still God's people. The Lord replies in verse 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. In verse 15, Moses responds to God. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the people on the face of the earth? You know, that's a really good question for Christians today. 
what distinguishes us from the rest of the people of the earth? I believe it's the very same thing. It's knowing and experiencing and living with the presence of God in our life on a daily basis. It's not a religious experience where we come to um, uh, discover God, we come to uh, know about God. It's experiencing God on a daily basis in our lives. Verse 17, and the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then listen to the next verse. It's verse 18 of Exodus 33. Then Moses said, show me your glory. Moses has had an incredible experience with God. He's had some incredible promises from God, but now he prays, Lord, show me your glory. That is what they call a big ask. I mean, he has had incredible experiences with God already, but he wants more. God initiates a relationship with us. That is a fact. But there is more about God that you can know and experience. And usually God waits for us to come to him. We read in Jeremiah 29, verse 13, a very familiar verse. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek for me with all your heart. Is he speaking to non-believers? No, he's speaking to the Israelite nation who have forsaken God and turned away from God. And God says, I'm right here. We have a relationship. You can have more if you come and seek for me. In 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, very familiar words. We read that essentially God is saying, when you go through tough times, if you will come to me and seek me out, I will hear you and I will answer your prayers. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Are there people today who are not hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Are they going to be filled by the many blessings of God? Not likely. God says he responds to those who hunger and thirst after him. Jesus stood up at a feast day in Jerusalem. And we read in John chapter 7 and verse 37 that Jesus proclaimed in a loud voice to these Israelites who had a somewhat of a relationship with God. But he said to them, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. He's essentially saying there is more. And if you're thirsty, come and find it. Come and get it. There is more for you. When Jesus was speaking to his disciples, just before he went away, he speaks to them a lot about the Holy Spirit. And he says to them in Luke chapter 11 and verse 13, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God wants to give you his Holy Spirit, but there's an element where the onus falls on us to ask. Later on in Luke chapter 24, just before he ascends back to the father, Jesus says, I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The obligation fell on the disciples, the followers of Christ, to stay and wait for the promise of God. God had something for them, but they were not to go about their business. They were to stay and wait. Moses asked God for more. Moses asked God for God to reveal himself to him in an even greater way. Your first encounter with God was almost certainly God initiated. God made himself a very real to you. But now the initiative falls on us. And God wants to know from us 
What is it that we hunger for? What is it that we long for? What kind of relationship do we want to have with God? Do we want to know him on a surface level or do we want to move into the deeper things of God? Learn more about what God is like and who God is like. The initiative falls on us. Some people have the attitude, well, if God wants me to have it, he'll just give it to me. But that's not how God reveals himself in the Bible. God reveals that he ministers to and meets the need of those who are hungry for him. He requires, he desires us to hunger and thirst after him. Remember the Old Testament Psalm, we sing it so often in church, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. There's a deep desire there for more of God. There are many people who are waiting for more from God, and God is waiting for you. I remember hearing the story years ago of a man who was desperately seeking for more of God. He went on a hike out into the woods and into the mountains and the hills nearby his home, and he was praying all day long and calling out to God. And at one point, he screamed out, I want more of you. And as he stopped for just a second, he heard the echo of his own voice coming back. I want more of you. He called out one more time. I want more of you. And he heard the echo again. I want more of you. And he learned the lesson that day. God wants us to seek after him. And as we give ourselves to him wholeheartedly, God responds to us in a wholehearted way. Moses says, show me more. And God says, stay right there. You're about to see the show of a lifetime. I'm going to show you more. Moses has this powerful God-initiated relationship, yet he hungers for more. And God responds to that hunger. Many of you have had a God-initiated experience with him. God has come to you in powerful ways and made you aware of his love and of his grace in your life. Maybe it was when you were a child. Maybe it was when you were in a very difficult, dark place. But God came to you and made himself real to you. Some of you are praying for others. And I encourage you to continue to do so. Believe that God will show up in their lives and they will have an encounter, an opportunity at least to have an encounter with God. But right now, God is saying to you, there is more. And God wants you to show some initiative and show more in your life. There is a song that we have sung in church many times that says, more of you, more of you. I've had all, but what I need is more of you. Of things I've had my fill, and yet I hunger still. Empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. I want to encourage you today. God has more than you ever dreamed possible. And he waits for us to hunger for it. He waits for us to have that deep desire. God wants to reveal himself to us in ways that we never thought possible. Do you believe it? I encourage you to ask God today for more. like an ocean I've been playing on the shore now I'm diving in because I want to know you more you are like a mountain I've been camping at the base now I'm heading to the top I want to see your face I want more give me more more of you Lord I open my mind and my heart to receive all you
I will never comprehend why you would desire to know me as a friend. You've been waiting for me. I've been wasting time. Now I'm running to you. My arms are open wide. I 